Hey, this is Scott Spears, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Scott Spears Now, and we have got an entertaining edition for you today. We are going to talk city government and also be entertained during this episode, because during the second half of this episode, we are going to be joined by recording artist Chad Clark, new CD, It's About Time. Chad will be performing at the Palace Theater here in Marion, mm. Saturday, April the 6th, he has 3.5 million streams on Spotify and has been heard in over 98 countries. Mm -hmm. And again, the CD is It's About Time, and he's going to be on with Mary Ellen and I in the second half hour. But in the first half hour, we've got some things to cover news-wise because, boy, oh boy, there has been no bigger story in Marion as of late than that of the city auditor, Miranda McGinnis, and city council, and the mayor, Bill Collins. It has been like no other story I've seen in quite some time. Mary Ellen attended the city council meeting with me uh, back uh, a week and a half ago. It was the last city council meeting they had before the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, the first one that Miranda McGinnis was back at. And uh, Mary Ellen has listened to the interviews with Mar uh, Miranda McGinnis, as well as city councilman Jason Schauber. So, She's a city resident, and she's also somebody who certainly knows about money, and it's always a pleasure to have her on. And by the way, this is kind of a seminal year, and I believe it's the first time we've had Mary Ellen on this year. March the 1st is the 30th anniversary of her being sworn in yes. as treasurer of the United States. March 1st, 2024, 30 years. Mary Ellen, does it seem like 30 years? Well, it seems a long time ago, but it doesn't really seem that long. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe it when I thought, yeah. 30 years? I know. My goodness. I know. Um, and when I left, um, I thought I was old. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still doing okay. Yeah, I'm still you're doing still fine. You're still doing just fine. Yeah, you right. can do the job today. <laughs> I think I could uh, at, uh, at that, but I don't know about city government. I said, city government is, is uh, new to me. I was never in it. But I now live in the city, and I do want to know what's going on. Well, Mary Ellen was, was very kind and attended the city council meeting with me, um, like I say, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, depending on when you're seeing this video. And we sat in the front row. We were right next to the mayor's box. We were right behind all the speakers. Mary Ellen, what was your take? First of all, it was a full house yes. that night, which yes. was great to see. Yes, a lot of people are interested, and that's good. What did you make, Just oh, we'll get into the particulars of this whole thing, but what did you make, uh, it was a three-hour meeting, of just the feeling in the room and how things were going? I think a lot of people thought a little rough. There were a couple moments where the new president of city council kind of had to take back things. How would you characterize the meeting just as a whole? Well, I think they were getting situated in their positions. Uh, new mayor and a lot of the new council, they were new. Um, I had a little trouble hearing. I think they need to use microphones in that meeting so people can hear exactly what's being said. But um, I think the interest is there. They were talking about... Um, the can do and and the um, what was the other thing they were talking about in the beginning the um, the uh, housing the, the house the house they wanted to turn into um, a rehab center yes there was a lot of talk about that but but then um, when they came to the situation that we were interested in the uh, city auditor um, and this no confidence vote which I had never heard of a no confidence vote. That was new to me and all my things that I've been involved in, I never heard one before. It's very interesting and to explain to people out there what happened was there was a third reading of a no confidence vote in Marion City Auditor Miranda McGinnis. But honestly, from what I talk when I talked to Jason Schauber and Miranda McGinnis after that uh, meeting, it's really just a ceremonial thing. If city council doesn't act any further than that, that's pretty much all it is. So it's a city government thing. Yeah, it just yeah. it just it goes in the record yes. that they have no confidence in her. Yeah. And by the way, the vote did pass eight to one. Only one council member voted against it. Mm -hmm. uh, no confidence. So at this point, they haven't met again. They haven't decided what to do with it. But what did happen was the very next morning, Miranda McGinnis came on the show, and I'm going to try to set this scene for everybody. She had resigned on December 11th, 
She rescinded her resignation on January the 4th. She was supposed to resign on January the 5th and head over to the transit department. Now, the first meeting back would have been the one that Marielle, that she was back at, would have been the one Mary Ellen and I were at in early January. And what happened was they took the third vote of no confidence and City Councilman Jason Schauberg, in during the meeting said, why did you rescind your resignation? And she said in the meeting, family and talking to other people. But when she came on the radio the next day, she certainly said a lot more than just family and talking to other people. She said that uh, people had come to her, being mm -hmm. the mayor, Bill Collins, a, a mayor-elect at that time, um, Jason Schauber, city councilman, had come to her, and they had basically said, think about your family, think about your house, think about your reputation, here it is. So, Mary Ellen, when you heard the interview and that had all went down, what did you make of it? Well, I, it was very interesting to me that they were putting up her house and her talking about her family and, and taking that approach. Um, and that has to do with the bond, uh, her $250,000 bond. I said, I never had a, a $250,000 bond in all of my treasury experiences. Mine were like 50000 and uh, I was shocked at the amount that they had on that, but I guess previously they had had uh, the same amount on, on other people. But I was surprised at that. It's, it's very interesting because Jason Schauber, city councilman, was then on on Friday that particular week, and it looks as if they are going to call her bond, and if nothing else at this point, because the, the question is, can't, she says she's not going to resign. She cannot see the circumstance under which she would at this point. Can they remove her? That's a question. Uh, they can try. We don't know where that's at right now. But Jason Schauber said he felt pretty confident that they were going to call in her bond. Now, for people who don't understand, Mary Ellen, what is a bond and why is this such a bad thing for it to be called in? Well, it's their it's the city's protection on what the amount of money she's lost. That's it's their protection. The reason you have a bond is if you have something happen that you have to pay money for, the bond will cover it if it's enough. And two hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> is quite a bit. Quite a bit of money. Yeah. And do you think at this point, just knowing what we know and who knows what's more to come, do you think they have the do you think they should ask her to resign? They've asked. Do you think they should go through a process, I guess is what I should say. Well, <clears throat> they know exactly what has happened, and I would think they would be doing more than what they're doing. Um, whether they would put somebody in there that can help her, that knows finance better than she does, that could help her, or they should have her leave then if, if they don't do that. I mean, they've got to do something. Well, the, the wrench that has been thrown into this whole thing, not just that there has been money lost and the city has been fined by the IRS and, and things like this are accruing, but now you've got meetings that took place between a mayor-elect and this auditor in which he talked about her house, he talked about her family, mm -hmm. he talked about all these things, and offered her a job, now again, we have to say allegedly, I guess, because we haven't heard from Bill Collins yet, but offered her a job in the transit department, which a lot of people would say is a quid pro quo, that I'm offering you this to leave this position, and you're not supposed to do that in government. But that's what's, you, I don't know, you know. It's, 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 it's got to figure it out pretty soon. And I think... To a certain degree, Jason Schauber said on, uh, in the interview he did with me Friday, that next city council meeting, he said he has to question Bill Collins on what happened in these meetings to move forward with this whole matter. Do you think Bill Collins at this point has to answer these questions? Mm -hmm. I do, yeah. Because do you think there's more there than what we're getting? Because it seems all very confusing. Well, they need to they need to uh, do some action because this has gone on too long. When it comes to money <clears throat> and what a city is running on, how do you think this is making us look uh, yeah. to 
I mean, we've lost our bond rating mm -hmm. in the Marion City. We, yeah. we we have our grant issues because we have no bond rating. We're getting fined left and right to the point to where the IRS is saying, you need to pay us on this date or we're going to seize assets. Um, we've had to sell off investments in the city because you can't use taxpayer dollars to pay fines like that. They've barely made payroll on certain occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, how is this looking on the whole? Well, I think pretty bad. And I would say everybody would say that. On the, again, on the whole, and again, we, we only know what we know here, do you think this is possibly more to do with lack of experience? Because Bill Collins came into this job um, really with no legislative experience in city government. A lot of the city council members who are there, and I believe five new ones, had no legislative experience in city government. I don't think the auditor had a whole lot of experience. Sir, no. She had none in city government. No. You've got all these new people, and here we are. And, and what was her financial experience before they appointed her? I'd like to know that. I don't think there was a whole lot, and she what? And it's a very that's a peculiar situation in and of itself. She was appointed by the Republican Party, even though she's an independent. Oh, is that right? Yeah, usually that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Usually they'll they'll uh, appoint within their own party. Yeah, it's strange. Mm. Now, on the whole, just ethics in government. I, I wanted to ask you this question: Is it ethical to come into somebody's office? and talk about personal things like their family and their house. Well, the reason they did that is because of the money that she owes, she's going to owe. That's that's where that's at. So you think more of a, um, there's concern here. Yes. I, I don't think you understand the concern of this to her. Well, I would hope she, under, she should understand it before she accepts the job. I mean, taking care of other people's money is a big responsibility. And when you lose money, other people's money, they are not happy. And that's the situation right now. Do you think at this point they can go ahead with trying to remove her? Because I certainly don't think she's going to leave on her own fruition at this point. Well, they're going to have to figure it out. They're on the council, and there's the mayor, and they've got to figure it out. Now, as far as all this goes on, how long can you, as you say, it's going on too long already, yeah. but how long can they continue to kick this can down the road? Well, that's the reason when there was nothing happening the other night, um, I thought I thought they couldn't accept her uh, not taking the, you know, uh, resigning. I, they didn't accept uh, the fact that she had resigned and then wanted back in. I couldn't understand that. That was an interesting point. And apparently when I interviewed her, that all came down to she went to the Board of Elections and said, can I rescind my resignation because it hasn't taken effect yet? And they told her that you have until this moment to do that. You can because it hasn't taken effect, but um, you do have a certain amount of time. And I guess that's why it came down on January the 4th. But didn't she sign something? Yeah, there was a resignation letter. Yeah, yeah. And when you've done that, you're out, usually. I mean, I don't understand how she can continue on after that. Well, I tell you, it's my understanding, and, and this is all complicated at best, but it, my understanding is the reason why she wasn't resigning the term that she was appointed to, which had not ended when the resignation letter oh, went out. She was, the next term was coming in. Coming, that she had already won oh. election. Oh, I didn't. I didn't think about it that way. Yeah, and yeah. that's why she was able yeah. to rescind. Oh, okay. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's all technical. Yeah. It's a very technical situation. But, and this is the question that most people have. Okay, let's say she doesn't have a whole lot of experience. Let's say she doesn't maybe know what's going on at this point. Why is it so hard to get help? If she wants that's to... That's right. Yeah. Where, what is the hang up there? That's right. That's what I think is the first thing they should have done when they started getting these penalties is put somebody in there that knows finance to help her. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I think that's a lot of people's question, and I asked you this off the air, but I want to ask you on the air, that when you went into a new position, because certainly going from treasurer of Marion County to treasurer of the state, that's a big difference in money. Yes. Uh, if you had a question, what did you do? How did you learn? Oh, I talked to the Attorney General a lot. He and I became very good friends. <laughs> <laughs> because it's hard to know these things. And and the, the counsel they've got for the... Um, city here he's he's he was very involved in all of it the other night i noticed and and he should be i mean would it be hard for her to reach out to people i mean there's no. got to be somebody around oh yeah there is you yeah, know they just got to find it i it, it, this seems like the whole thing may come down to miscommunication because is she not asking for the help are they not providing it certainly at this point we all know that there's a problem Yes, yeah. But where is it? Yeah. It's hard to tell. Well, um, it, it's, they've got to make some movement and do something instead of uh, all of this just talking about it. When it comes to the new mayor, because that's also an interesting thing here, we do have a new mayor who took office on January the 1st. Uh, how bad is this situation with offering her another position not talking about it after she has talked about it. How does that all look right now? Yeah, I, do, I don't know. Um, that is, you talk to the uh, council on that. I, I, uh, they know the rules, surely. Well, we were there for an interesting conversation. There were area, during that city council meeting, there were members of Marion Area Transit there. And they asked the mayor at one point, are our jobs safe? Because that's where the auditor mm -hmm. was supposed to go. And the mayor said, they're safe today, they're safe tomorrow, and in the near future. And then City Councilman Ayers Ratliff spoke up and said, I'm not satisfied with that answer because I've heard there might be a merger. I've heard with another county or a private company. And then the mayor said, well, I can't predict what's going to happen four years from now. And when I asked Jason Schaber about this, he said he would not have used those words that the mayor used. Might have given uh, false hope to some people in, in the mm -hmm. transit department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the end of this whole how this all dovetails the position that they were giving to Miranda, the mm -hmm. auditor, was the director of transit, which now it looks like that could be a position that would be eliminated very soon. And they said there was transit people there at the meeting. There were. Yeah, there were. Yeah. So I, the whole thing is <laughs> just a mess. Yes, it is. This is why when we look at government, why is experience important? I tell you, it is, it is very important. Um, I, I just, uh, I just feel that they should be very careful appointing somebody, especially when the position has been in such, such a state that they they appoint another person and then they find out that that person can't do the job. Um, there wasn't enough research, I don't think, before they made the appointment. When they put somebody else in this office or bring somebody in to help her, what qualifications does this person need? What do they need to look for at this point? Well, they need to know um, both state government and uh, they need to understand government uh, pretty well because she's dealing with federal government and the state government and, and that's where the problems were. Yeah, it's yeah. and and the IRS is not a group to be played around with. No, no, <laughs> they, they don't. They don't play around. No, no, they're they're not they're not waiting around for this. <laughs> no. You know, it's interesting, Mary Ellen, because I believe I'm right in this. When you came to the state treasurer's office, you were following somebody who had some issues with oh, their job. Yes, uh, over a million dollars issue. Yeah. Yes. So you've been in the position to where you were coming into an office that was mm -hmm. not in good shape. They, they managed to uh, embezzle the state highway patrol money, which... Wow. <laughs> if you're going to pick a department to take money from, I'd think that would probably be the... That's a bad the, one. <laughs> That's a bad one to go... <laughs> a million dollars. Yes, and um, the man that uh, signed signed the papers before I got there, uh, he, was, he worked for me then and um, signed the papers when the situation came back that it was completed it, it was it was quite a quite a time and um 
the woman that did the damage was the chief um, um, person at the uh, at the uh, desk out there that took the money and the um, head cashier, and, and so um, yeah, it it was quite a quite a situation, I'll tell you. Coming into an office that has seen a million dollars in embezzlement from the State Highway Patrol, <laughs> were you nervous when you walked in? Were there long days in the beginning? Well, we were trying to get the security under control. Uh, we had several um, companies come in and, and go through the security for us on what we really needed to do. And um, that was a big help. Um, Yes, it uh, it was it was. I tell you, from the from the time I took over as state treasurer, and all the time that I was U.S. treasurer, it was security because U.S. treasurer. I mean, I was responsible for the manufacturing of the money, and they could steal that too, you know. So uh, it was just security was constantly on your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long did it take to get the mess totally cleared up? Well, uh, I would say, we said, we've got to get this cleared up as fast as possible. We felt we had to get it done in about six months. And um, and I think we did get it done in six months. Uh, we, had, we had one robbery by uh, a person that was a relative of one of the employees that took checks off of a desk. And then we made a rule that there should be no checks left on a desk overnight you know and um oh it was it was a big job because the office was poorly run before i was there uh, the mail room was packed full of mail and that should never be the case because in every one of those letters is a check and uh, the state is losing money like crazy so we we redid the mail room um and and it it was just constant constant uh, redoing of the whole office, really. What would you give, because at this point, we are where we are in the city. Miranda's in the position she's in. The city's in the position she's in. From somebody who came into a bad situation, what advice would you give her at this point? Because I, I think she needs advice from somebody. Yes, she needs to check with uh, people that can give her answers. And she should know who those people are. Uh, there's people to help you in government. Everybody has people that can help you. And, and you know, they're there for a reason. You just got to use them. When we look at this whole situation on the whole, we've had an auditor, Robert Landon, who resigned. Yeah. We've had Miranda, who resigned and then pulled the rescission back. Uh, when somebody starts something and things start to fall apart, as they did under Robert Landon, is it hard to right the ship well, it, it depends on how bad it was, and I understand it was pretty bad. Yeah, and That's the understanding we all have, yeah. is that things were not in a good way when, yeah. when he left office. Uh, so I guess in the end, how much of the blame here at, so far falls on city council, falls on the auditor, falls on the mayor, if this is not fixed in, in a quick fashion? On all of them, yeah. I think it falls on the voters, too. Yeah. The voters, at the, do you think the voters understand who they're voting into positions? Well, they should. You should pay attention to who you're voting for because uh, you don't want to put somebody in there that doesn't know what they're doing. And interestingly enough, in the case of the auditor, this Miranda was elected, but she was unopposed. I know. Yeah. And that's, that's not good either. No, and that's a high position. In the yeah. in the city at this mm -hmm. point, yes, she controls everything. I understand the. Uh, I learned that uh, everything goes through her office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The grants. Yeah. A lot. It all mm -hmm. flows through there. So the auditor is a very, very, very important position. It is. And yeah. and I would think payroll. And I would think at this point that uh, and it's also my understanding, just to be clear, that she now has accrued more fines than Robert Landon did. Has she? That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. So here we are, yeah. Yeah. going into 2024. Who would have ever thought it? Uh, I guess. I, I guess the big question at this point, really, under all this, is 
is do we need to deal with her, do you think, or do we need to get the answers from Bill Collins on what happened in these meetings and then go from there? I think we go to Bill Collins. He's in charge and uh, work with him. Why do you think he has remained quiet? Uh, well, he's just getting started. Um, he's got to get everything running right, and it's it's a job in the beginning to, to get everything in, under control. Um, so, you know, I think you should work with him, though. A lot of people have said to me, who've heard these interviews with Jason Schauber and Miranda, that if they say, if, if somebody would have went on a radio program and said these things that were not true, if they were not true, that I would be out there the next day saying, hey, that's not exactly the way that that happened. Do you think that that should have happened at some point, that maybe Bill should have said, whoa, that's not what happened, if it wasn't what happened? Oh, I, I don't I can't say what he should do, but um, he, needs to, um, he needs to take charge. And we'll find out on the long haul what happens here, but it's, it's an ongoing thing, and we'll keep an eye on it. And uh, the next city council meeting is going to be a very interesting one because Jason Schauber had told us that at that meeting he is going to question Bill Collins. How did this meeting happen? Why did it happen? Why was this job offer made? And why did it all go down the way it did? Because a lot of people have questions and a lot of people are, are worried in the city right now. Mm -hmm. Money worries people. That's, that's one thing you'll get people's attention about. It's their money. It's their money. And how are they going to make this up on the whole? You know, and somebody messaged me last night and said, um, you know, city council is going to get a raise in two years. Uh, you know, are they doing the job that, that would negate getting or, or would justify getting a raise in two years? People are starting to question this with everything going on. Well, you have pretty much a new city council. You see how, to, how they perform. Uh, they've got two years to, to perform. Are you interested to see how this all shakes out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a fascinating thing. Yes, I am. I'm very interested in how they're going to um, how they're going to figure it out it's it's not easy you know it's very interesting that we are in a weird news vacuum right now with the Marion Star having no reporters yeah. uh, thank goodness we're we're able to do what we're able to do but it's strange because i keep wondering well how many people don't know what's going on mm -hmm. this is one of the biggest stories in Marion city government in in years i think most people know what's going on i i hear a lot of people discussing it isn't it interesting yeah isn't that interesting mm -hmm. how word because in the meeting yeah. itself there are maybe 75 people 50 people at most mm -hmm. but yet it gets out people find out and maybe that's the internet now maybe that's one of the great assets of the internet as people well it was those those articles about the auditor and how much money was all the penalty money all of that gets everybody's attention it certainly does yeah. and and people again when it comes to money that is a very mm -hmm. important issue in everybody's life and nobody wants their taxes raised no <laughs> and i and i think on the whole what people are afraid of is is that yes they can't pay fines with taxpayer dollars but if the city keeps coming up low on money that maybe the taxes will go up to cover their bills. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll hope not for yeah. those people. Yeah. I did want to get your thoughts. Uh, we're going to bring Chad Clark in here, and Mary Ellen's going to stick around with us during the second half here. But the Iowa caucus just happened for the Republicans. Yes. Donald Trump wins the Iowa caucus 51%. Uh, we still have uh, uh, Nikki Haley, and we still have... Um, oh, uh, DeSantis in the competition, but how's, how are things looking there after the Iowa caucus? Any thoughts well, on that? Well, it, everybody kept saying it was going to be like that. And it uh, was. At least uh, I, they weren't sure about Nikki and DeSantis, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to go see the uh, um, Jill Biden on uh, Friday. Oh. I'm real anxious to uh, to a fundraiser in Columbus. Oh, how nice. Yeah, and so that's my answer to the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> to, to what happened in Iowa. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that'll be very interesting. <laughs> very, very... We'll have to hear about that when you yeah, get back. Yeah, right. See how that went. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to bring Chad Clark in here. Mary Ellen's going to stick around with us. We're going to continue the conversation right after this short but important break. Hey, this is Scott Spears, and I want to welcome you back to this very interesting episode of Scott Spears Now. With us, the 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow. And again, on March the 1st, 
She will celebrate 30 years since being sworn in as 40th Treasurer of the United States. 30 years. That's, that's about, And we all remember the day so well here in Marion because there were a lot of people there from Marion. Oh, there were. Yeah. It was a big crowd. <laughs> Did, didn't they have to change rooms? No, they didn't change rooms, but they took all the chairs out of the room because they didn't have room for the chairs, and they couldn't get the people all in the room either. It was a big crowd. What an exciting day. Yeah. You know, Mary Ellen, I wanted to talk to you about this because a lot of people are starting to talk about people staying in jobs longer. Uh, because for a long time, I think people felt conventional retirement age was 60, 65. You had just come in to... to uh, a big, big job in that neck of the woods. What would you tell to people who are thinking about retirement and just kind of laying back? Well, I think you should stay active as long as you're able. If you're not able, that's a different question, but I think it pays to uh, do work as long as you can, really. And you loved your work. I did, yeah. I was <laughs> yeah. How many hours a day would you say you put in? Oh, I don't know. It went on. It went all night sometimes. <laughs> I I traveled all the time, and and it was, I I put in a, an awful lot of time. I'll tell you. And you were at 1994 through 2001. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a great great run. Now we have Chad Clark with us, and Chad's been with us before, but not for a while. So we're glad to have him back with us. And again, his CD is available. It's about time. And uh, on Spotify, I, I re read recently, 3.5 million streams on Spotify in 98 different countries. Chad, what is that? That's big numbers. What uh, what does that make you think? Um, the 98 different countries, that blows me away. You know, I get a lot of emails from like Belgium. <laughs> they're not even an English speaking country, but they're listening to my music. So that that's exciting. Now, country music, we've talked about this before, but somebody new may be tuning in. What is it about country music that has that kind of appeal to somebody in Belgium? Um, you know, Harlan Howard, one of the famous songwriters of Nashville, he said that country music was three chords in the truth. And uh, I think that resonates with people, even in other countries, in England, New Zealand. I've gotten emails from Australia. Um, you know, it's just incredible that, that this type of music hits people's hearts. It, it absolutely does, and I do want to remind people as well, we talked about this, but the date is getting closer. You will be at the Marion Palace Theater uh, Saturday, April the 6th, performing. Tell people about that show and how they can get tickets. Well, um, the show is called the Lights Out Tour, and it's uh, a packet show. It's, it's myself and uh, Lee Gant out of Columbus and Kyle Fields. He's out of uh, Nashville. Lee's been in Nashville, too. Of course, I'm back and forth, Nashville, back here all the time. So uh, we're three independent artists, so it's going to be three separate sets. You know, we're not playing together, per se, but uh, it's going to be a great show. It's right before the solar eclipse. So there should be a lot of people in town that yeah. weekend, you know, a lot of out-of-towners coming to witness that because we're in the prime zone of that. So that, that's what's going on. You can get tickets at the Palace box office. You know, I just recently realized that a lot of people, a lot of schools are canceling school that day because of this solar eclipse because they think so many people are going to be in town. Mm-hmm. It's un it could be a big event just four months away here. I uh, don't know if this is true, but I've heard that all of the hotels in Marion are sold out for that weekend. I heard that, too. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that something? Now, Mary yeah. Ellen, is this something you're looking forward to? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get ten minutes out of it. Everybody will, will It'll come be dark in. for ten minutes. That's right. Just like at night. If you, if you miss it, you can just wait till that night and pretend along. I, you have to have special glasses, though, I think. Oh, really? I think you have to have solar glasses to look at it, if you're going to look directly at it, I think. No, I'm not going to look. No, I'm just going to watch it get dark and go along with it. And, and this is also an interesting year. Not only do we have this going on in April, but it's leap year. Oh, is this leap year? This is leap year. I didn't know that. 29 days in February. Yeah. So we have, don't miss it by a day, by not counting leap, <laughs> leap day in there. Uh, Chad, what does it mean to be performing at the Palace, headlining this show in your hometown? Um, the first time I played the Palace, I think I was 17 years old. I had just graduated high school. So I've played numerous shows over the years, opening up for other acts there. 
But uh, this is a big deal to me because I'm the actual headliner. You know, what I love yeah. about country music is is that uh, a lot of music now is so um, put through machines and, and, and the vocals are changed that you really can't do it acoustically on a program like people used to. Country music, you can still do that way. There's probably less uh, electronics and computers used in country music than some other genres of music, yes. What do you make of all the, the shows now that, you know, everybody's got pyrotechnics and everybody's got dance numbers that they do on the stage with dancers? Uh, do you think that takes away from the music and the performance, where somebody just used to sit on a stage and perform? I, I don't necessarily think it takes away from a performance, but they are different types of performances. I'm more of a singer-songwriter type guy, so I can go out there, throw a stool on the stage, and, and do the songs that I wrote. Um, one of your bigger stars like J. Lo or, or uh, Taylor Swift or somebody like that, they give you an experience when you go to their shows, so it's just a different... Uh, genre of our subsets. What do you make of Taylor Swift being named Time Magazine Person of the Year? Mm -hmm. Never has happened. Uh, I don't believe a, a musician has ever been named Time Magazine Person of the Year. And here this 30-something year old girl from country music is the Person of the Year along with Winston Churchill, Adolf Hitler, uh, Franklin Roosevelt have won this award and now Taylor Swift. She has make, made a splash in the entertainment industry. I mean, let's face it, not many people in her line of work become billionaires. Yeah. So it's uh, amazing what she's done worldwide. Uh, and in the world. Now, Mary Ellen, of course, just following the news, I mean, Time Magazine Person of the Year is usually a president, a foreign leader. Uh, it was the, the people of Ukraine a few years ago. Taylor Swift, what'd you make of that? Person of the Year. Well, good for her. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's certainly an accolade. Yeah. I think Willie Nelson should be up there, too. <laughs> <laughs> he should, and he's still going strong. Yes, he is. Performing in his 90s. Yes, he had his birthday party the other day. Yeah. yeah. Keeps on going. Why do you think a guy like Willie Nelson keeps on going, Mary Ellen? In, oh, because he's good. Yeah, and it's not, and people still show up. He's still good, yeah. Chad, what do you make up? Because I think he would probably be the oldest living performing country artist of his caliber at this point. Well, he's definitely an icon, you know. He's shaped our musical fabric in this country. There's no doubt about that. He's been around since the early 60s. He was uh, a prominent songwriter before we ever heard of Willie Nelson singing, you know, uh, Crazy by Patsy Cline, some of the uh, great songs that he written for other musical artists back in that time period. So. Yeah, I mean, Willie is part of our lives. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because he's had different sets of, of his life in that, as you say, he was a songwriter at one point, and then a performer, and then he had the uh, formation with Johnny Cash, and the Highwaymen, I believe is what it was called, yeah. with Johnny Cash mm -hmm. and, and uh, Waylon Jennings and that whole group, Chris Christopherson. And he had his trouble with the IRS at one point. Sure did. Yeah, so, but he... <laughs> It's always the IRS, isn't it, Mary Ellen? It's always the IRS. Oh, well, you got to pay your bills. got to pay your bills. Yeah. But he came through. He, he came through it. that, and he's still yeah. going here at 90-something years old. Yeah. It's a thing. Chad's going to do two songs for us live here. Chad, what's the first song you're going to do for us? I think I'm going to do one-fifth at a time for you. Here we go. And this is on the album, uh, Chad Clark, It's About Time. Now, again, the CDs are still available, but Spotify is definitely a way to go. Just go to the Internet, and you can hear this song. Chad Clark. I wake up with whiskey on my breath. Wishes she still loved me, cause I love her to death. She's got
It's about time again. You can get it on Spotify. 3.5 million streams in 98 different countries and performing at the Marion Palace Theater headlining on Saturday, April the 6th. Now, Chad, last time you were on, uh, a song which I like a whole lot on here, Deep Hollow Road, you were getting ready to film a music video, your third music video, I believe. Uh, but that got delayed because of weather. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's the uh, current... I mean, we're, we're in some cold weather right now here in Ohio. <laughs> Absolutely. What, what's the outlook for this? Maybe spring well, or summer? Well, we're probably going to do it uh, late spring, early summer, when it's a little more uh, hospitable outside. You know, that's an interesting song. And I have heard from so many... I, I say it's it's one of my favorites, uh, certainly on the album. But I people who saw that episode that we did together back in the fall really like that song. What is it about that, and, and why are you making that one into a music video? Um, to be honest with you, I think what resonates with people, it, it's just a song about a little getaway. And, and if people can afford that, I think they love to have that. Whether it's just a camper at a campground or a condo in Port Clinton or, you know, that people have their little getaways and it's their little escape, you know, to get their minds right. And this is a real place. This is a real place. This is a place that my friend has in southern Ohio and it started out as more of a hunting cabin, but... Uh, yeah, we go down there and we just unwind. <laughs> well, I, I look forward to to this video because, like I say, I think the song is great, and it's it's one of those songs that, as you say, it, it a lot of country music deals with relationships and things of that nature. But this song is just a fun song, but a nice getaway. Talks about the getaway. Talks about the original uh, person that owned the property. Uh, my friend's stepfather, he grew up there. So, yeah, it, it's one of those things. I think it just resonates with people. It really, really does. And will that be the other song we'll be hearing here today? Yeah, apparently, that's the one. Oh, I know. I, I, can request, <laughs> I just put a request in there. It's, it's such an entertaining song. People love that song, and I, I think it's great. So, uh, Chad, if we want to gear up to do that one, I do want to let people know again that uh, Chad Clark will be at the Marion Palace Theater Saturday, April the 6th. That's very important. And what time is that, Chad? Seven. Seven I think p.m. The show starts at seven. Do we know the price range for the tickets? I do not know that, but Just I'll call get the box that office. to you. Yeah, call the box office. I think you can get them online, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. If you go to their website, you can do it that way. Uh, I would like to mention that the night before, Friday night, this same tour is going to be in Findlay, Ohio at oh. the Marathon Center, which is similar to our palace. You know, the Marathon uh, Oil Company has their headquarters mm -hmm. up there, so they sponsored a, a, an arts uh, complex. So we're going to be up there Friday night and then Saturday night here in Marion. And what can people expect at this show? 
uh, a lot of good country music good country from three music. independent artists that you don't hear on the radios per se, but we've got other big stars out there like Zach Bryan and Tyler Childress and uh, you know the, the list goes on and on. Uh, the landscape of music has changed. You used to have to go to Nashville, New York, or LA to make it in the music business and not saying that I'm making it, but I'm getting some attention and not living there full time. Exactly. Well, I, you know, know what? I go to town a lot. I call it going to town, yep. crazy town. <laughs> but uh, I go to Nashville a lot, but uh, it, it's not one of those things where you have to be based there anymore. That's true. And the internet has opened this up. Absolutely. And and things like Spotify are great. And again, 3.5 million, when you think about that, that is, and that's within a, a year and a couple months. Yeah. Yeah, not a whole mm. long time. Yeah, so that's really. pretty good. Yeah. And 98 countries. Mary Ellen, that's wow. amazing. Yes. Now, the song you're going to hear again is on the CD, can be got on Spotify, purchased on Spotify. Uh, the Apollo Road, the Apple Music, Apple it's Music, on YouTube. It's Google you and they'll find it. A problem. Absolutely. <laughs> Chad Clark, it's about time. The Apollo Road here on Scott Spears Now. Take it away, Chad. <laughs> Ah, 
Very, very, very nice. <laughs> You know, that song, Mary Ellen, just gets your heart pumping. There's oh, something yes. about that. Yes, it's got a good beat. Good beat to it, absolutely. <laughs> and again, it's Chad Clark. It's about time performing at the Marion Palace Theater, Saturday, April the 6th. Again, 3.5 million streams on Spotify. Go to Apple Music. You will find the music. Chad, when you're putting together a CD, what's the process? Um, for me, the process was I just had a bunch of songs I had written, and it all started out, it was the summer of 22, I believe, I, uh, somebody told me, you need to put this song on TikTok, and I'm like, what's a TikTok? Mm, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So I knew nothing about it. I'm at that age where I'm a little beyond the computer, you know, rush that happened in the 90s, so well, I didn't know what TikTok was, so... I sat down and I did a solo thing like we're doing right here and we recorded it and just within like two weeks I got 38,000 hits. 38,000. Oh, wow. So that's when I decided, <laughs> hey, I've got more than just this song. I've got seven or eight songs that are newer and maybe I should just go and, and get these recorded. So that's what I did. Then I put it on all of your streaming services and it just manifested from there. Very, very nice. Is there a second CD or a second compilation coming out anytime I'm soon? I'm working on uh, new material right now to get in the studio and, and do a second CD, but I don't have a time frame on that per se. It's expensive to record as an independent artist, but uh, we're definitely looking forward to doing that sometime in 24. You know, I asked the same question of Mary Ellen, but I think it's apt here. You're doing this at a time in life where obviously you're not just starting out, you're not in your 20s. Is it satisfying to do something like this past the age of 40? You know, I've always told people, uh, I started out doing this as a teenager, you know, actually performing out. So to me, it's not really a hobby. It's kind of a way of life. And uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to work for a utility company. Get, I got to retire early. And now I could focus on this music stuff 100%, you know, so that's what I'm doing and I'm enjoying it. Mary Ellen, uh, when you think of music, what do you think it does for people? It, 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 it can bring people out of a bad mood, can put them in a good mood when they're having a tough time in their life, it can change them. What is it about music just in general? Well, it just makes you feel good, I think. You know, if you like the music, it's it's wonderful. What do you think, Mary Ellen, is the key to success in a given profession? What advice would you give to somebody, if you're speaking to a high school group of kids, if they want to be successful, what do they have to do? Do something they like. And when people say, because you hear this all the time now, how much does the job pay? How much does it pay? How much am I going to make? How important is that? Well... You have to live, but, you know, the pay, to me, was not the most important thing. Uh, it never was. And I think when people chase the money, ultimately it doesn't work very well. No, you have to enjoy what you're doing. Chad, what would you say? What advice would you give to somebody? Oh, I, I agree with Mary Ellen. I mean, you, you have to be passionate about what you do. Um, I was never passionate about my job. I, I told you before, Scott, I thought I was good at my job. Like your job? Um, Got to be there for 30 years, so I must have been okay with the company. You know what I'm saying? They kept me around until I was able to retire. Mm -hmm. But um, it wasn't a passion. This is a passion. Mm -hmm. Whether or not I yeah. get paid, I will play this guitar. Yeah, yeah. that's so. right. This is, this is my calling, per se. You know, and I think that's it. You know, a lot of people say, and I, I forget who it was, so I won't quote them, but recently I heard somebody say, um, and they were making a lot of money, their profession, millions or something of that nature. They're very successful. But they said, uh, I would do it for free. You know, mm -hmm. don't tell anybody that, but I would do this for free. And I think that is, the, and I think they're being honest when they say that. You know, that you would do it, you would have done... I said that a few times. Yeah. I said, don't let anybody hear this. But yeah. I would do yeah. You would do it for free. I would do it for free, yeah. yeah. Because, you know, do you think that adds time to your life? And oh, yes. I, I think it does, too. I think yeah. that's a... I was having a conversation with a person the other day about attitude, how it affects mm -hmm. your health, yeah. how it affects your longevity. Yeah. Even if you're facing something that's not great, attitude, how important is attitude? Well, it's everything. Yeah. 
outlook is important. I have a whole speech on attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you do? <laughs> that I would give students, yeah. 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 Well, what would be the gist of, of your speech on attitude? Well, uh, the only thing that really matters is your attitude. <laughs> yeah. If if you're uh, living your life um, and you don't have a good attitude, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Chad, what would you say about attitude and, and being positive about things instead of negative? Well, it, it's the key to happiness after you retire for, for sure. Um, when I got to leave, I wasn't the only person that left. They had a corporate buyout at a major utility that I worked for. So there was quite a number of people around the state that I knew that accepted the same offer that I took. And we were all in our mid-50s. Some of those gentlemen are now back to work because mm -hmm. they had no hobbies. They were lost at home, mm -hmm. too young just to sit on the couch and watch TV, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So they wasn't really ready to stop working at that juncture, but was given an offer that they couldn't refuse, if you know what I mean. Yeah. When mm -hmm. the, you get an offer from a corporation like that, you have to really think long and hard about it. But yeah, they all went back and got other jobs. Not all of them, but I'm just saying, I never had that problem because I had this Martin. Yeah. And this Martin guitar is more than a hobby. But, but if you're thinking about retire and you do have to find ways to occupy your time wouldn't you agree Mary Ellen yes absolutely I mean yeah when I when I left my job I had to leave of course <laughs> and uh, I missed the people right I mean that's what I missed and and I I was very sad about it for a while <laughs> <laughs> and I well, agree with that. Yeah, the first two yeah, years, yeah. you know, that I was retired, I missed the, the camaraderie yeah. of the guys I worked with. Right. You know, Mary Ellen, as you were going through this, because it is interesting for a politician that, you know, without getting into the history of this whole thing, but looking back on it 30 years ago, uh, about 25 years ago now, when you left office, it was that interesting year, and people can look it up when... when Gore and Bush were running against each other, and you had already talked to Al Gore at that point that you were going to continue beyond if he were mm -hmm. elected. And then election night, we had this thing with Florida, and we didn't know the, what, who was going to be president. The so at hanging this time, chads. hanging chads, <laughs> and you're at this time waiting to find out what's going to happen. Yes. And then it ended up leaning in the Bush column because yes. of some decisions. So what got you through being out of that position? You say it wasn't you missed the people. What got you through? Well, I went to a grief seminar at the National Cathedral. I said everybody else was there because their husband had passed away, and I had lost an election. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no kidding, I, I, I had to get myself back into um, being happy, really. <laughs> And that's a trick yeah. sometimes. Yes, it is. Especially in that circumstance. <clears throat> Again, we want to let everybody know Chad Clark will be playing the Marion Palace Theater headlining Saturday, April 6th, and the show in Finley the night before. Uh, 3.5 million streams on Spotify. The album is Chad Clark, It's About Time, and Mary Ellen Withrow celebrating 30 years this year on March the 1st, being sworn in as 40th Treasurer of the United States. And we're going to keep on this uh, deal that's going on in the city, and Mary Ellen will stick with us on that because she's a city resident and it certainly is something fascinating and we've got Groundhog Day coming up on February the 2nd Chad's going to be along with us on that day and I think Mary Ellen is going to try to be with us that day as well as she was last year we're going to have a lot of fun with that starts at 8 15 that morning and goes to 11 a.m. Friday February the 2nd so it's going to be entertaining in a lot of ways right here on WGH for Chad and Mary Ellen this is Scott Spears for this episode heading for the dugout <laughs>